Uh, we've been dealing with these large fires in Twin Falls for a long time. Some of these areas in the field office had been burned nine times in the last maybe 15 years. So we have these uh, just progressively larger wildfires every year and it's, it's a big problem. So the fuel breaks that we're undertaking here are, are trying to stop that cycle. Immediately it started growing in size, got air attack back, started ordering heavy air tankers and seats and whatever we get our hands on, plus bringing up our FPA members and additional engines and dozers and all that kind of stuff. The fire was moving really fast. It covered six miles of ground in about an hour and a half. I'm just watching this thing going and in my mind, you know, we've totally lost this thing. We're going to be chasing it all day and all night. And so when I get almost over there, the, the head of this thing just fell over. I'm like, it's kind of odd, you know, went from this big running column to the column just falling apart. And so now we no longer had a head fire of any kind, it was just a flanking fire. So we were able to get all the rest of our resources, get them re redeployed and clean up that south line and, and we were able to hold it. And the main head of the fire, when it hit, it pushed into the fuel break a little bit. You can see where it tried to push in through some of the stubble, but there was just nothing there to, to carry it. And if it hadn't been for the fuel break, this, I mean, this fire would have been 100, 200,000, I have no idea. It would have been huge because it was cooking. The wind blew all night long. Out here in this country, if you don't have something to stop the fire, it's going to keep going. And where we had that fuel break in place, it, it stopped the fire. Ultimately, what we would have is a green fuel break that maintains itself in perpetuity instead of us having to revisit every year. The whole fuel break profile is 275 feet, both sides of the road. What we've been using for our main treatment is uh, aerial herbicide application. We're basically trying to hit from all sides the plants that exist out there and re either reduce them 100% or seriously stunt their growth. Then we have a nice blank canvas on which we can plant seed. We're seeding stabilizer Siberian wheatgrass and some forbs. Instead of growing tall, like you would expect a grass to grow, it grows sort of low. If you were to have anything grow next to the road, you would want it so that it doesn't grow tall and lend itself to fire growth. And later on in the winter, there will be kochia. That's the plant that's gonna stay green into the hot summer months. It's ideal because a fire will hit that stuff and it's still green so it won't burn. That's really how this is supposed to work. One of the issues with these fuel breaks is they're multi-phased. So it's gonna take a while to get from step one where we initially start to spray to where we're finally seeing that end product of a green strip on both sides of the road where it's actually working. Here comes a fire and it screeches to a halt. And we were able to see that this summer when the Centennial Fire hit one of those fuel breaks. But I think people need to know that it's gonna be a while before we get there, but we're working towards it. So I think that's pretty important.